Our roots come from ACT UP Philadelphia. We started as a syringe exchange program, but into it, we started to ask our participants, what else do you need? And they told us, we need free doctors. And your test is negative. We went back and said, what else do you need? And they said, we need a place where we can come and just have a cup of coffee, relax. You can come in, we actually have a couple of games, watch a movie, get away from all the hecticness that's outside. And people came back and said, how about a shelter where it doesn't matter that you are a person who uses drugs? Welcome to Beacon House, the lowest barrier shelter in the United States. We ask participants what they need and then come up with a program that suits what they were requesting. How are you? I'm Tina. Hey Vivian, nice, nice to meet you. you. Thanks for coming. Women's Night is a safe, welcoming space for all who identify as female or trans feminine. It has a good vibe. We try to play good music. We sing and dance. We have showers, home cooked meal. Don't forget, ladies, we have Narcan up here, works and condoms if you need any. It breaks stigma around substance use, mental health issues, and really just making people feel valued and dignified. You want socks? Men's night is a safe environment where men can come and, you know, be themselves and a place to feel welcome. I'm a barber myself, and I know that having a haircut can do wonders for an individual. Somebody may be depressed, not feeling good. Offer them a haircut. Offer them a kind word. And all of these have the ability to change somebody's life. This is a place that encourages people, doesn't force people to get into treatment, but if people are asking us for it, we're ready to deliver that service. And it's something that we do practically every day. We're on the mobile surge bus. We go to areas that have a high amount of ODs in the neighborhoods that are not in Kensington. So even though you were still having some withdrawal with Suboxone, it sounds like it was helping? It, it was helping. It's, okay. it's better than spending money on dope. Let's restart it then. So after we call 911, we give them a dose of Narcan. Just hit them in the nose. Next thing you do, turn them in the recovery position. Just turn them to the side. Ambulance will come, and you just save the life. How you feeling, man? You're back? You want to see one care? Mail, right? No, mail's around the corner. Here's where they either get their checks or they get their food stamp cards or their medical cards. So listen, sweetheart. My post office is not like other post offices. Mine's is special. I have plants all over, which is good for the oxygen. I'll listen to whatever issue they're going through. And I do get little notes. Well, this one, it says, thank you for treating me like a person not a monster. Have a seat, sweetheart. You can go in three. We are the only public restrooms in Kensington for participants to use. These guys, they don't have anywhere to live. So if we don't have restrooms, we have a mess around Kensington. And, and that's just a sad reality. Friday is one of the busiest days for the syringe services program. We'll see between 650 and 700 people today. So, return the syringes that they have used, and then they'll go down into the basement and they'll collect new ones. Take care, thank you for thank coming. Thank you, have a great day, guys. We don't force, we don't obligate. We're ready when you're ready. That's what they offered me. They're like, you're ready, let's, let's do this. And they believe that we can recover. We can break this cycle. I'm giving back what they gave to me. They gave me hope, I'm giving back hope. A lot of the staff are in recovery themselves, so they, um, you know, have a little bit more understanding. We show them exactly that. Like, at the end of the day, we're just like you. You're, you're just like me, we're just like you, and, you know, you're just going through a little bit of an obstacle right now, but that's okay, we can help you get through it. They saved my life, basically. I was on the verge of going really, really down. I was doing it every day, bag after bag. My drug habit is less now. I can always come here and read my books and I don't, I don't have to run the streets. A lot of people think whoever that person was before they started using is gone. And that's not true at all. 
And I love that I still get to see that person and like um, the drugs are secondary. I love sitting with someone and just like listening to their story and learning their story. Prevention Point is a place that staff provides loving care to people. How you doing? Good, how are you? No matter what the situation is, and they don't give up on participants. I don't like my job. I love my job. There's a difference. At Prevention Point, I saw that there were so many other people who were like me, people who are imperfect, people who are unique. It's so cool to me that all these different, unique people are working together to solve a unique situation. Prevention Point, it's not here 30 years by mistake. It's here 30 years because it's needed. The work that gets done here is valuable work and life-saving work, and that's what's important. The work is incredibly gratifying because people's lives are changed. That is God's work. That is a blessing to be a part of, and I'm grateful.